knowledge. Getting these products in hand is especially difficult for young women in Africa. Lack of menstrual care, such as sanitary pads, is the reason that 30% of girls drop out of school. Young women not feeling that they have access to contraceptives is a big reason why for the teenage pregnancy rate is at 14%, and why the largest HIV-infected demographic in the world is young women in Africa. Getting access to women's products should not be so difficult, and it doesn't have to be. My name is Joanna Bixel, and I'm the CEO and co-founder of Kasha. Kasha is a technology platform that sells and delivers women's health products, such as sanitary pads and contraceptives. We have a widely accessible retail platform, and we're building a brand focused on women's empowerment for health and self-care. Women in Rwanda today can use a web browser, a mobile app, or any type of mobile phone to be able to access Kasha. They don't have to have a smartphone, they don't have to have internet access. They can browse through products, they can order, they can pay via very even though we haven't done any broad advertising. Kasha was built in Rwanda and we have a stellar team uh, that's made up of uh, people with experience building technology, marketing, and supply chain solutions across Africa. Prior to starting Kasha, I was at the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation as the Principal Technology Advisor for Global Development. I have a background in software engineering, business, and I've worked across Africa. My co-founder has background in product marketing and finance, and our team in Rwanda hails from companies such as Amazon, Microsoft, and Tigo. <laughs> Sorry. The biggest business opportunities right now are really in technology, health, and women. Kasha is perfectly poised to be able to take this opportunity by storm. We have an untapped market opportunity to fill. We have an existing scalable product that's already generating revenue, and we have a stellar team to do it. Invest in Kasha, and we'll change the world together, putting women's needs first. We'll take any questions? Yes? Okay, so we have two here and one. Wait, we'll start. <coughs> Hi. Hello. Can you talk about a little bit about how you're acquiring customers and how much that is costing per customer? Sure, yes. So as I mentioned, we only have been operating for a few months. Um, but I'll talk first about a little bit how we plan to acquire customers, and then I'll talk about the cost that we're forecasting. Um, so, uh, various different ways. Um, there's organic growth, of course, but then we also plan to tap into various communities, such as students. We've had a lot of success that's very relatively low cost. We also plan to use a lot of um, social media, especially around women age 18 to 25. They're about Instagram, Twitter, all kinds of social media. Um, and also influencers, and radio, and uh, various different PR is a bit highly influential within these markets. So we do plan to spend around that. Um, but I think most importantly, we really want to lead the conversation around women's empowerment for health and self-care. And so building that trust. And so um, that leads us to so many opportunities around just customer lifetime value, along women's lifetime recurring health needs. Um, but today we project for the first year, our customer acquisition cost will be at around $4, dropping to half in the second year, um, and you know, generating that movement. Hey, well done, that was great. Um, so my name is Kenny, I just had three quick questions. Um, the first one is, you, you set this business up in Rwanda. Could you talk us through what your scalability plans are across the region? I know you've just started, but it'd be great to just understand at what stage you believe you'd be ready to move out of Rwanda and into other markets. And then secondly, what is your capital raise? I don't think I picked that up. And what, what do you plan to do with the cash? And then thirdly, could you talk through um, one thing that needs clarification is, you know, in Africa we have issues around contraceptives for women and having them order them. 
So are there any, how do you plan to do with that moral um, dilemma in terms of having women who may be underage or being contraceptives and having them delivered to them? That's, that's a key cultural question that needs to be explored as well. Yes. Um, so the first question I will address is so we are operating in Rwanda today and we are looking to raise two million to drive 18 months of operations and expansion. We want to be able to operate across Rwanda, be able to operate in Kenya starting in early 2017 and then uh, expanding also to a pilot in Uganda at the end of 2017. So we do have an ambitious growth and scale plan. Um, there was a other question there. Yeah, so, you know, the, the, the focus is really on enabling women to access the products that they need. Um, and it's interesting because women's health and anything to do with women's bodies tends to be a stigma, which is quite surprising because these are, you know, just biological concerns. And so our stance is really we provide quality products available to all women. And so we definitely target certain individuals. We focus on women 18 to 25 as our core customer base. Um, but we're a business and we serve women at all ages. Our focus is really on health. And the focus on health being that you need to protect yourself at all time. And let's have this conversation as a supportive conversation. And also, women feel empowered to make the choices that they feel is right for their bodies, their health, their families, and their communities. mentioned quality products that you supply to your women. I'd just like to understand a little bit more about the products you offer, where do you source from, mm -hmm. um, if there are any particular well-known brands. Um, I'd also like to know about your supply chain logistics when you look to expand outside of your current region. Um, and then also your pricing, how well you compared um, with just general retail pricing for your products. Thank you. Sure. Sure. Uh, first, I just want to say that Kasha strives to be Africa's largest retailer of women's health and personal care products. And so there's a whole bunch of categories in there, as you can imagine, through the lifetime of a woman. Our focus is really on that quality aspect of it, especially with a lot of counterfeits and various different things like that. And so we are not a marketplace. We do not go from various stores, but we do source our products from local distributors, um, as well as suppliers and manufacturers. And so today, we sell a variety of menstrual care products um, and also contraceptives. We also plan to expand into you know, various other areas. You can imagine more long term, you know, women eventually, you know, there's pregnancy tests, they want to get pregnant or fertility tests. Uh, women get pregnant and then there's postpartum and then there's menopause. I mean, the business opportunity here is, is huge. And the crazy thing that surprised me is women need these on a regular recurring basis. They buy them today and they don't have a good experience. And so what we're doing is we're creating a better experience for women in a positive, supportive environment. Um, and that's really what drives a lot of our product selection, that quality and also the focus on women's health and personal care. Um, your next question was around the supply chain piece. Uh, right, the scalability of it on you know, an Africa level outside yeah. of your country. Region. Yeah, yeah, and supply chain, we actually have an incredibly strong uh, head of supply chain that has worked across sub-Saharan Africa. And for us, we have a few different methods. I mean, we can deliver direct to someone's home or work, or we deliver to a pickup point. And we're finding that around 30% of people prefer picking up at a pickup point, which greatly simplifies our uh, logistics and supply chain. Um, of course, depending on the country, there's different services in place, there's, it's a different context. And so how we plan to operate in Rwanda is a slightly different model than how we plan to operate in Kenya, for example, or others. But it is um, within that model of either direct delivery or pickup point. Yeah, so the final question was about your pricing and compared to other retail locations in your area. Thank you. 
Um, so for our pricing, uh, so we, our team has actually analyzed all the pricing around uh, Kigali and we strive to be affordable, as affordable as possible. And so we've looked at everything and we're somewhere in the middle or a little bit below. Um, we get volume pricing on our products and we're able to be at a lower cost. We don't have to, you know, staff a bunch of people in stores. And so we definitely are, um, our goal is to make these things accessible. Um, and so offering quality products at affordable prices in a convenient way. Thank you. Um, yeah. <laughs> My name is Steven Fugu, I'm from Victoria Rental, which is a local based uh, angel network. I had a question in terms of your target uh, customer. So, which lady are you looking for? Is this sort of like the middle come uh, ladies, the uh, low, sort of like the high end? And uh, assuming, because my, my assumption is that it's sort of like middle to high end, uh, most of those uh, ladies, at least in my experience, have access. Uh, so I'm just trying to understand how or all the need you're trying to solve from that perspective, especially if it's not sort of like uh, bottom of the pyramid from that uh, Well, so, um, so first of all, all women, I'm serious, all women have uncovered in getting these products. And so that is, you know, really an equalizer in that sense. We do focus on, you know, middle income women between 18 and 25, although, of course, everyone is is welcome to order on the platform. Um, and so within that context as well, what we're finding is we do also have an opportunity to serve women who cannot afford it. The way we've done that is we're actually instigating um, this social component where a woman can buy a sanitary pad to give to a girl in a school. And so we are able to also, just as a company, enable that access. Um, but I'm finding, what we're finding in general is e women at the lower middle income level are aspirational in their purchases and they purchase things that we didn't expect them to purchase as well at the, the cost levels. And then women who are at the higher income levels also prefer not to purchase these things in person or send someone else to do it. And so there, um, I really do see an opportunity, although we are focused on middle income women uh, between 18 and 25. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you so much, Jonathan. Let's have a round of applause.